Hey, this is Flo and welcome back to the next part of the widget kit series. In the first part, we actually just added the extension to our project and I went over all of the generated code very briefly. In this part, I will tell you a bit more detail about the generated code, about the structure of a widget, how you need to implement it. And then we will actually look at how to add a configuration intent or how to edit a configuration intent to enable the user to enter a stock symbol like IBM or AAPL and then um, change the widget's content based on that. So if you like the series so far, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below what you wish to be covered in a future video series or just a single video. Okay, so let's get into this. And actually to explain to you how the widget works, I will scroll down all the way until we find our main entry point to the widget. And I've actually told you about this already. So basically the starting point is very similar to our um, stocks app starting point in the main iOS app. So there's a struct conforming to app, which has a body and in that our UI is rendered. This is very similar in a widget. So we have a struct conforming to widget because we're not dealing with an actual app here. And then it has a body which renders our UI and our configuration and so on. Now, as you can see, there is a widget configuration in here. And um, we are using an intent configuration. There's also a static configuration, but intent configurations allow the user to change some parameters like the stock symbol. In this intent configuration, we pass basically um, the name or the identifier of the widget, which in this case is just stocks widget. Then we also pass the intent that we actually um, want the user to be able to edit or that we want to have inside of our view, which is the configuration intent. So this is just um, pre-generated by Xcode when we selected include configuration intent in our target. Then we have a provider, which is the timeline provider up here. So this basically um, is needed because widgets work on a timeline similar to watch complications, which enables the widget to be refreshed at uh, set intervals and um, yeah, to reload basically. So you need some sort of timeline here. And then this is very Swift UI style. So you get an entry in here in a trailing closure and then you just um, have your actual view so um, this is basically this up here, just Swift UI views. And for that view, you usually pass your um, timeline entry, which in this case just contains a date, this is needed, and then a configuration, which is the configuration intent. Then this intent configuration can also be customized. So for example, you can give uh, your widget a name this is helpful if you want to add several different widgets to an app. So then you could name one, for example, a stocks widget and one a statistics widget and one a whatever widget. So this enables you to have different names for different kinds of widgets. Then you can also add descriptions. And then you can also add the supported families. So as you know, there are three kinds of widgets right now. There is the system small, which you can see on the right hand side here. Then there is the system medium, which is basically twice the width of this one. And then there is the system large, which is basically four times as big as this widget here. And now here in the supported families, you can actually just pass an array of all of the different supported families that you want. In this case, mm, let's just add system medium in here. Let's resume the preview. And now it should show us a medium sized widget. Actually, it doesn't because our preview context says system small. So we should change, change that to system medium. And now you can see the preview shows us a medium sized widget. So what the supported families up here does is it um, toggles which families the user can actually select. So in code, we can force a different size but the user can now only select a uh, medium sized widget. Let me show that to you on the simulator. So I'll just run the extension scheme, which we selected up here. 
Okay, as you can see the widget got automatically installed because we selected the widget extension scheme in Xcode. And now if I edit the home screen, tap the plus icon, then there should be um, the stocks app right here. We can tap on that and as you can see now the user can't select any other widget except for the medium sized one because we specified it here in the supported families then our description and configuration display name are also displayed right here. And now the last thing, we can tap and hold the widget and right now nothing happens. Uh, and now the last thing, we can tap and hold the widget and now, oops. And the last thing, we can tap and hold the widget and select edit widget right here which will then open up the configuration. Right now there is nothing to configure because we haven't added any parameters, but let's actually look at that right now. To change the configuration parameters, we need to go into our intent definition, which is called stockswidget.intent definition. And then you can see our configuration intent here. You can change the name, you definitely need to check that it is eligible for widgets because otherwise we can't use it in our widget. And now the most important part is the parameter list down here. So let's just add a parameter. Let's call it symbol because that's what we actually want the user to enter. We want them to enter, for example, IBM, AAPL, TSLA, whatever, some stock symbol. And now on the right hand side here, you can change the display name. So this is the internal name of the generated class uh, member. And then on the right hand side here is the displayed name for the user when they uh, edit the widget. You can change the data type. We will actually use string because that's what we need. You could enable it to be an array. Now there's um, different other options here. We don't really need them. We could, for example, provide a default value of IBM. We can also change the keyboard settings here. So. Um, capitalizations, we could actually set it to all characters because that's how stock symbols work, right? They're all capitalized. And then there's a couple of uh, other settings, but I don't think that they're really important for the basic understanding. Okay, so now this symbol parameter is part of our configuration intent. Now if we run the target again, okay, we actually also need to add a um, zero dialog here so let's just put in some test value let's build again now it should work we don't really care about the zero dialog right now now the build works let's actually run it on the simulator now okay and now if we edit the widget we have the symbol parameter here which we can enter some text into it gets auto capitalized and then this is actually sent to the widget. What this now allows us to do is, for example, scroll down here into our stocks widget entry view, so our actual Swift UI view that is displayed inside of the widget. And let's um, embed this text, for example, in a V stack. And below the time, we could add a text of our entry dot configuration dot symbol this is now generated for us this is optional so we can optional chain it with for example no value like this now if we run the widget again let's see what happens okay and as you can see now the symbol value of our configuration intent that the user actually entered when they edited the widget is now displayed inside of the view. Okay, so that's it for the configuration intents for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next video. Bye!